I got a whole host of Canadian insanity for you, and we're going to work our way from the West Coast over to the middle of the country, wherever you want to put Ontario. And then we got to circle back around to Alberta to end it off because that's where I'm at, and that's the most important province in the entire country. So fuck you, that's where the money's made. Anyways, you see, Supreme Court allows Twitter to be sued for defamation. That's good, maybe? I don't really no we're gonna have to take a look here and that creepy old fucking joe biden stand needs to get off my page the supreme court of british columbia decided on thursday that it has jurisdiction to take a case by billionaire philanthropist frank gisurta sure against twitter over defamatory tweets made on the platform which allege involvement in a supposed conspiracy known as pizzagate holy fuck you guys remember that one wow that was a long time ago Gistra, a billionaire businessman living in Vancouver, bought a def or brought a defamation case against Twitter after being accused of being involved in a pedophilia ring by promoters of the Pizzagate conspiracy theory. The theory alleges, yes, a number of high-profile business leaders and politicians. It's basically the basis. It's um, kind of, like, let's just say, Q1.0. Fair enough. Most of whom affiliated with the U.S. Democratic Party are involved in an elite pedophile ring. The theory became the focus around the Clinton family. Yes, and then later, of course, all of their goings-on and flight logs, and it's only got bigger and more fucking abstract from there. Promoters of the conspiracy... I don't care about that. Let's just get to the actual case. The, slu the suit claims that allegations against Geistra are baseless and have damaged Geistra's professional and business reputation. I've never heard of him before, and he's a billionaire. I think he's doing all right. The decision to allow Geistra to sue Twitter in BC was settled on a jurisdictional basis. Twitter is based in California, a state which, according to the court documents, Geistra has strong connections to. Okay, Twitter argued that Geistra could only sue them for defamation in California, which in effect would mean that Twitter could not be sued by Geistra due to connections the platform received under Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act. Twitter alleged that Geistra was only suing in a British Columbia due to jurisdictional advantage. Yeah, obviously. And this is um, good precedent. I didn't realize how good this would be, but it will definitely go a long ways into what we're going to see with the aftermath of all of this mass deplatforming that's happening right now. There's a lot of people saying that uh, Trump or even anybody else who's getting thrown off the platforms left, right, and center could be suing across the ocean. Okay, they could be suing in the UK if they have provable ties over there. And then now with BC opening up the door here, there are significant business interests that can be harmed from there. And if you have established residency, okay, Canada might be backdooring in some help. Interesting. We'll see where this one goes because I want to see what the ultimate outcome is of this is it's a double-edged sword right if you want to start suing these platforms that could lead down one slope which eventually can be weaponized against you but at then the same time twitter also needs to be held to proper regards i don't like what's being raised in this lawsuit because if you're suing under pizzagate buddy you are like fucking four years behind and this could just lead to twitter further quashing any other supposed right-wing people because that's just how they'll smear pizzagate it's just more or less the fucking tinfoil hat brigade, but just bring it on over. I guess we have a big tent, and it's what we're told anyways. Now let's head over to Regina, okay? It is the largest city in Saskatchewan, and Saskatchewan, if you aren't in Canada, let me inform you, is about the most boring place on earth. You can see your dog run away for three days. That's the old joke. Had to make it, but to give you proper context... It's just a place where not a lot happens. Like, okay, they recently found that they had a lot of natural resources buried underneath that little bit of farmland. And it's been a booming economy prior to the shutdowns and prior to all the goofy shit that Justin Trudeau's been putting in. With that aside, I didn't really think that they had a uh, big cityitis. You know what I mean. When it gets liberalized, once it hits, what, like 100,000 people? Does that seem about right? Maybe 75,000 people. Once you hit about that size, then you just fucking lose your mind and become leftist utopia. Because as you can see here, Regina Canada Post. Employee refuses to deliver Epoch Times. Why? Since COVID started exploding, everything's been anti-China. This fucking Karen doesn't want you to know what's going on because you're being mean to China. Listen, I've seen some of these mutants that Canada Post hires. The current mail deliverer we have is fucking spectacular in my neighborhood, and he does a terrific job. But beforehand, 
Oh, buddy, they could be coming and dropping off mail anywhere between 8 in the morning and 4 at night. You think I'm kidding? It definitely happened. Or just put shit all willy-nilly in different boxes, but this bitch is just taking her job a little bit too seriously by um not doing it at all, really, whatsoever. I guess she's just kind of taking the Twitter approach. You just don't need to see the Epoch Times because it's just a far-right smear job. This is just a smear campaign. Listen, I like the Epoch Times. If you guys have been following this channel for long enough, you realize that I probably use them in a week. Eh, probably about five or six articles that come from there. I think they do a decent job. It's kind of far. It's... I was going to use their terminology. It's definitely left... Er, <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely right-leaning, okay? Uh, without a doubt, some of their verbiage, I believe, are they the outlet that calls it the CCP virus? Yeah, because it came from China. Let's get into why this fucking moron doesn't want to deliver the paper. Canada Post employee, get him off my screen, that's creepy. A Canada Post employee from Regina has refused to deliver the anti-Chinese Communist Party newspaper, the Epoch Times. I, yay, according to the CTV. That's probably why CTV took this up, because... They are very pro-liberal government and not, you know, regular, oh, look at that crying liberal, the Liberal Party of Canada, who are very, 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 very pro. There already, there's already been violence and hatred toward Asian communities in North America since President Donald Trump got into office. I cite the source, moron. Since COVID started exploding and everything's been anti-China, said Canada Post courier Ramiro Sepul Sepultura. I'm giving him too much credit. Sepulveda shows you how much this moron knows. The newspaper was founded by Chinese Americans who are part of the Falun Gong. A controver it's not controversial whatsoever. It's basically like if you took the practices of yoga and extrapolated them out there to the entirety of your life. Kind of like that new age movement of the early 2000s, late 90s. That was like namaste, fucking taking all of the hippy dippy horse shit. No, I'm not doing them justice, but it's essentially that. And they were kind of like the Uyghur Genocide 1.0. It's a big deep dive and they were, CCP was quite effective at getting rid of the Falun Gong people, but essentially what's happening to the Uyghur Muslims in the death camps right now is how the CCP treated the Falun Gong that didn't escape. Many religious, oh, like many religious groups has faced persecution at the hands of the Chinese Communist Party in recent years. There we go. The Epoch Times has been one of the only outlets to consistently take a hard look at China's authoritarian practices and policies. I'm helping. Come on now. The Pulveda said the paper's anti-China stand can rub people the wrong way. Yes, if you're too stupid to fucking read it. Oh, this says things that doesn't adhere to my ideology. I should just throw it out. It's a public newspaper that spits lies. He. Oh, I'll go suck on some wheat grass, you fucking fruit. Enough with him. I hope he got fired. Canada Post is obliged to deliver any mail that is properly prepared and paid for unless it is considered non-mailable matter. The courts have told Canada Post that its role is to not act as a censor of the mail or to determine the extent of the freedom of expression in Canada, the public ma mail courier said in a statement. Yay. This fucker should be placed on leave, okay? If he was not delivering something that somebody subscribes to just because he has some kind of whacked perception of reality he should not be in charge of public services i know bold stand but i doubt he will because canada is fucking stupid speaking of which i made reference to this a couple days ago but yeah the lockdown at this most recent anti-lockdown protest the lockdown by the police on the anti-lockdown protesters following me you know, it gets a little dicey early in spring 2020 protesters began showing up on the lawns of ontario's legislature queen's park to promote or to protest the lockdown measures uh, promote anti-lockdowns enacted by premier doug ford and he's done such a terrific job because cases keep spiking but there's a large, relatively large populate, population to Ontario, and we've gone through everything there, so. And this guy here, you think, de uh, depending on which device you guys watch my content on, that says, make Canada great again. Another play on words, not a mega hat. But he's being treated exactly the same as people who are going to be bold enough to wear mega hats in the future. That's how they're going to be treated. But here, let's continue on with Premier Ford's declaration of a second state of emergency, because he just can't give up that power. He's like a fatter Gretchen Whitmer. In the province on January 7th, speculation surrounded what would occur when the protesters gathered as they have each Saturday since the first demonstration last spring this weekend. Toronto police issued a warning to attendees early on Saturday morning through a statement declaring that the, pub er, the COVID-19 pandemic was not just a public health issue. No, I think that's all it is, okay? It's a public safety issue. See what they're doing, okay? 
I'm warning you guys in the United States, whenever they try to take away your freedoms based on OMA safety, this is what they're trying to do. They're trying to implement and continue on in perpetuity their power grab and case in point right here. Adding that participating in large gatherings, including protests, mega rallies, is not just a con oh, contravention of these orders. Listen to our orders, because we definitely pass them through Cong er, the legislature. I'm talking about Canada now, I need to change my verbiage. But also puts attendees and the broader community at risk, because you might, I don't know, feel a little bad for a few days. Before declaring that these events... Oh, these events occurred. Police would be present and ready to enforce the, the or these orders, as many had been the case on so many prior occasions. Rebel News, yes, Dave Menzies, and cameramen were downtown Young and Dundas Square. Or depending on what your sports team is, if it's the Leafs or the Raptors, you can be down there. And if they win, you can tear the place apart. But if you want to be down there and you want to protest against the lockdown procedures, oh yeah, you will be met with swift and brutal Toronto police enforcement. Here's a short clip. It doesn't look like a lot, but oh, you pan around and it's significant based on the crowd that you see. Literally looks like there's probably what? what would you guys say two to one three to one probably police officers and oh yes they got the bitch on the fucking horn because of course oh my god we got some more fucking insanity here yeah uh he or she got a fucking threatened with a fine and then we got an old lady getting arrested like what the fuck like okay i understand you're just following orders but do you really think you're doing anybody a favor by dragging away an old lady. For fuck's sakes, you people should be ashamed of yourself or just understand that you, as becoming a police officer, took an oath to our Bill of Rights saying that you'd uphold it. And where is it in there that you need to protect people from a disease that has a 0.02% chance of costing you your life? Oh, to be fair, you know, a granny probably has a point what? 0.3, 0.4% chance? For fuck's sakes. This thread goes on and on, and I can link it to you guys as well if you'd like to see a couple more snippets, but that's enough there. Like, it's it's been going on in Toronto, like they've said, every Saturday, and yeah, Doug Ford's response, Premier of Ontario, I just locked down harder, and how long is it going to last? Oh, I don't fucking know. They're not going to be happy until they incite a Capitol Hill-esque riot. I think they know that. And that would be their impetus in order to create a Patriot Act style piece of legislation to push through Ontario. And then because it's in Ontario, Justin Trudeau will just take that up to the federal level. And then what's good for one is good for everyone because it's 2021 after all. Okay, for the past four years, Trudeau has been completely bodied by Trump. I can't think of a single victory he's made against Trump or even really kind of stood up against him. Now, one of the things that Trump signed in, I think it was within his first 100 days, he signed in the Keystone XL pipeline. Okay, it was in a precarious place under the Biden... Er, <laughs> well, he was there for it. That's fair enough. Uh, the Obama administration, because, oh, I don't know, uh, my environment... And it's the same kind of logic here because, oh, Biden to cancel the Keystone XL pipeline permit on first day in office. Great, 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 great. This directly affects everybody in Alberta. Okay, we are in a precarious position. Most of our wealth comes from oil and gas production. And then a distant second is the forestry market. And hey, without that, we will sink to the fucking bottom. And this is running right through our province. A lot of people's jobs are going to be put away thanks to the cancellation of this and it'll be heralded as some kind of a great and wonderful thing in regards to climate change and oh there won't be so much pollution going on people who don't understand pipeline production i worked in the oil field from the age of 16 on and off until i was about 22 when i went back to college okay most of the people who screeched the hardest about that have never been out on a lease before after pipeline construction is done, it is a very, very beautiful aftermath, okay? It's not those fucking dark clouds that you see in all your pictures and all your propaganda. It's not tearing up the land. It is reseeded, replanted with trees, and you can't even tell afterwards anybody was there. And there are so, especially here in Alberta, that's what I can speak to the most. There are so many safety people, environmental people, experts that are out there making sure that you adhere to all the environmental 
environmental standards. They're a pain in the ass to deal with, but they're there making sure that if anything gets spilt, it immediately gets cleaned up by a combo steamer vac piece of equipment. Nothing seeps into the ground. Nothing gets buried alongside the pipeline when it gets put back into the ground. And then after all that stuff, the cleanup crews come in, they reseed the land, they put in the trees that were knocked down. Two to one, they get replanted. It looks nothing like what you're fed to believe, okay? Yeah, this is what I did on and on for six years, and most of the rest of my extended family does this on a fucking daily basis. It's not wonderful work. It sucks, especially when it's 40 below, and you're still out there. A bunch of men are out there doing work, okay? And that's as bad as it looks, okay? Do you see any sort of pollution occurring? That's all mud. That's all topsoil that gets peeled back. Everything has to be found before anything occurs. And if there's any leaks and all of those pipelines are properly protected. So in the very rare instance that any of those welds break on any of those bends or anywhere across there, if anything occurs, they immediately know at either end of the processing facilities, wherever the pipeline's going. They know where the leak is and that there's a leak in this line and it needs to be found and it gets found quick, okay? And I'll tell you, the, most of the pipelines that are up here in the Grand Prairie entire area, that's what the aftermath looks like, okay? Does it look terrible? Does it look atrocious? No, it all gets fucking dealt with. Joe Biden's trying to walk back all of Trump's progress when it comes to the oil and gas industry because, oh my fucking clean air, oh my Paris Accord, all he's going to do is kill off all of the oil and gas industry in Texas, Pennsylvania. I'm sure they were going to send over some people, but um, yeah, they're already having second thoughts about everything it, when it involves voting for Biden. Utah, Wyoming, Montana, that is going to hit them directly in the pocket and nobody's going to like that. I figured it was going to be a tough tough four years but i didn't realize that we up here in canada would also be bearing the brunt of this but based on fucking stupid low information there you go not only are the voters for the democratic party low information but yeah, we already knew this but this is confirmation that so are the politicians but you enjoy the rest of your sunday evening that was just a little hodgepodge of what's going on up here in canada eh? we're a bunch of fucking hosers if you take a look at it at fifty thousand feet but Every once in a while, one pokes his head up and has to parse through the bullshit and lets you know what's going on. We'll catch you guys tomorrow. I thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.